Hello everyone and welcome to a new In The Mail, the series that will touch both your passion for electronics and your bank account at the same time. These are my most popular videos, people are requesting I do more of these, so here is another one. The first item is a few different colors of this AWG22 PVC cable. It feels decent, it has ratings on the insulation 80 degrees Celsius and 300 volts. The reality is you don't need to use silicon wires for every wiring job. Sometimes if you don't need the flexibility or the higher temp rating of the silicon wires, you can just use PVC type wiring. And so I got these wires exactly for those jobs. They're fairly inexpensive, so well worth keeping a couple of meters, different colors in the lab. Some people also have salvaged wires that, and they reuse that, that's fine as well. I would do that myself, it's just that here in Romania there aren't any uh, auctions on electronics, there aren't any tech companies that will close activity and sell their inventory uh, for cheap, so I have to buy things like this from China. But it's perfectly fine to buy some used cable and uh, reuse it. And while we are in the wiring department, I'll also show these uh, rainbow ribbon cables. These are uh, crimped with female headers. They're ready to connect your Arduino to whichever sensor you happen to be using. You can get these in a few different styles of uh, crimped ends and different lengths as well. They are cheap, but I can say that these are not the same quality as they used to be a few years ago. You can see they, they are pretty stiff. If you bend them, they kind of uh, stay uh, in that position. So they feel pretty stiff. They don't have too many strands in the core, but I guess they work for prototype stuff. Until they don't and you spend a few hours debugging a problem that was caused by bad wiring. So don't just uh, go using these on uh, your most important uh, project. And if you happen to have uh, an intermittent problem, it's well worth checking the uh, cables. I also have a uh, bunch of uh, servo wire and if you haven't worked with this before the main thing is that it contains three wires because that's what servos need and I think these are usually 26 AWG. It's fairly inexpensive, I use it for servo wiring on my RC planes but I also use it for other types of wiring like uh, I use something like this for wiring up the BL Touch auto bed leveling sensor on my Creality CR10 3D printer, so it's pretty useful and inexpensive, worth keeping it in the lab for small wiring jobs. This video is sponsored by JLC PCB, a professional manufacturer of printed circuit boards. Their website is modern and has convenient features like easy to use order form with built-in Gerber viewer, production process tracking, package tracking, and single button reorder for previous orders without having to upload Gerber files again. Next I have some of these um, 5 pin JST connectors with cables. These are the uh, JST XH model and uh, this size is used for balance plugs on uh, battery packs. I intend to build some 18650 lithium ion 4S packs and I need to add one of these connectors for balance charging the pack. I'm just going to solder it directly on the batteries as I don't have time to build a, uh, a spot welding tool and uh, maybe I'll do a video on that later when I construct that battery pack. My next item is not interesting by itself but by the way it was delivered. These are just uh, some uh, lithium polymer cells they are 150 milliamp hours capacity. I ordered four of them, but look what I got. The fourth one is bulging already and it looks like it uh, could explode any minute. These were uh, packed in some uh, plastic bags, then they were all put in a plastic envelope with no protection at all. So this could have been like this from the warehouse or it could just have suffered uh, some damage during shipping. But anyway, that's, that's not how you ship uh, these uh, lithium polymer batteries. So I'm gonna have to uh, uh, file a complaint with eBay for this uh, delivery because I only got three working cells. 
So the idea here was to use these to get uh, something over 16 volts to power my um, AD584 voltage reference, which needs at least 15 volts. But I've changed my mind since I've ordered these and I don't think I'm going to use it, uh, use them anymore. Well, I don't have four uh, to make up uh, more than 16 volts. But also when you discharge these to let's say 3.5 volts per cell, then there is not enough uh, voltage left in there for what I have intended for that um, voltage reference. So I'm going to ditch this idea and uh, use two 9 volt batteries instead. But anyway, I thought I'd uh, show these. Uh, yeah, this is, this is not how you ship lithium batteries. And uh, this is quite dangerous to use in this condition. Next, I got a couple of these uh, NEMA 17 stepper motor vibration damper and uh, I plan to install these on my Creality CR10 3D printer to see if it would make a change in the noise the motors are putting out which I think it's amplificated by the whole aluminium structure. These were like uh, $8 with uh, free shipping and I think it's worth to pay $8, $8 if they really do make the printer more quiet. I've been reading a lot of positive reviews on the forums, so they will get installed soon on my 3D printer. I just hope it's going to be easy to fit them and I don't need to make any changes to the printer. Next, I have something you've definitely seen before on the channel. It's the DigiSpark 80Tiny 85 module. These are great little development modules based on the ATtiny85. They have the microcontroller, a 5 volt regulator, the needed passives and they feature a USB bootloader so you can program these just by plugging in into a USB port. There is no other tool needed to uh, program these uh, modules. They only have a couple of IOs available but they are uh, good enough uh, for simple projects. I see these as consumables, so I always keep a couple of them in my lab and the nice thing is that they're super cheap. Usually they're just $1.50 a piece, but this time I don't know why they were on special on uh, a particular seller on eBay and they were just $0.75 cents a piece. So I grabbed a couple because if you consider just the 80 tiny 85 microcontroller, uh, if I were to order it from Farnell it would be about one dollar a piece and about six and a half dollars in shipping so the advantage of getting one of these small development boards for 75 cents shipped it's pretty clear when you take cost into consideration next i uh, got myself one of these uh, flexible miniature tripods it's one of the uh, cheap ones uh, feels pretty cheap but uh, i just need it for a simple job holding my phone while I take uh, some uh, close-up shots uh, on the bench. Sometimes when I want to show some frames with me soldering something, I need to get really close and a small tripod like this should do the job. I don't like the fact that it uses this, um, this cheap thin plastic, uh, but you know, for $2 delivered, you can't ask for more. I, if I find it to be working nicely with my setup in this size, I might find myself uh, a better one and I might upgrade uh, later to a more expensive and uh, better built one. It also came with a couple of accessories. This one is used to clamp the uh, phone and uh, this one I guess is one of those uh, GoPro mounts. Next I have some watchmaker tools but I'm gonna start by saying why I'm getting these. It all started a few years ago when I got myself a new watch and don't think it was something super expensive, uh, but it was new and I liked it a lot. A year later the watch needed a new battery and I took it to some old guy's uh, watch repair shop where I left it for a battery replacement. The result was a scratched back cover because the guy was probably an idiot so after that happened I've been replacing my batteries uh, myself for me and uh, for a few friends and uh, I feel much better knowing I will take care each and every time. Slowly over time I've been getting the tools I need to get the job done for the various models I have or I encounter. So now to show you what I got. It's a kind of a clamp to hold the watch. It's a vise. You place the watch in here and you uh, 
uh, hold it while you work on it or, or while you try to remove the uh, back cover. And in this kit, it's kind of a, uh, a three point mini wrench. Inside this kit, you got a bunch of uh, different uh, sized heads that you install in here. And then using this mini wrench, you can pretty much remove any back cover uh, that exists on uh, watches. So this should be uh, pretty helpful to open the vast, vast majority of uh, watch covers. Not everyone is uh, working with servos, but if you're building RC planes or maybe have some other type of automation where you want to move something, you might be using servos. And if you're looking for a cheap source of decent quality small servos, uh, these are Tower Pro servos from Banggood. Um, they have a very good price to quality ratio. They're probably not genuine Tower Pro, but most likely a good uh, fake. Banggood had these uh, bundled in a set of six pieces for just $14. And uh, these are metal geared servos. I'm building a new flying wing and um, also I would like to 3D print and assemble some uh, pan and tilt mechanism. I found some interesting designs on Thingiverse and uh, I'll give them a try pretty soon. I still need to get myself a 180 degree servo for the pan movement and those inexplicably are considerably more expensive than symbol servos and I don't understand why because internally I'm assuming they're constructed exactly the same way. They just have a wider degree of uh, freedom. I just don't understand why they're more, more expensive. My next item is a 30 watt D-class audio amplifier and uh, there's nothing special about this but I thought I'd show it to you because uh, uh, I couldn't find the original datasheet of the amplifier. Maybe you can help me a bit here. It's marked OEP30WX2 and uh, it seems uh, to be available in stereo amplifier module as well. So I would assume the chip is capable of uh, two times 15 watt output or one times 30 watt because my module is single channel and claims 30 watt power. The module feels so small for the uh, coated power and uh, I know it's class D but it has to dissipate some heat it's not 100% efficient and uh, this small PCB isn't gonna cut it. Also the uh, filtering they have on the uh, output, I think that's not enough for this kind of power. I'm not gonna start doing tests on this because it's not really my area of expertise but uh, I would expect the this little module to fail in every possible way because it just feels like it's built as a bare minimum. We can see they have uh, placed a bunch of uh, thermal uh, vias on the back under the chip to suck the heat away but look at the model it's, it's just one square centimeter of copper how is that going to dissipate a few watts or maybe this is designed to act like a fire starter you know when you're lost in the outdoors and need to make a fire you grab one of these amplifiers uh, you apply power uh, you place it inside some dry tinder and uh, you make a fire in the wild yeah i guess you could use it for something like that I'm going to end this in the mail video with uh, this module that I find very interesting. It takes uh, 2.8 volt to 5.5 volt DC input and it will give you a uh, plus and minus 12 volt at the output. It's uh, obviously a boost DC to DC switching module so I'm thinking you can use uh, something like this to uh, power an op-amp. But I'm not entirely convinced because uh, thinking of an op amp with a plus or minus supply, uh, you would also need it to be fairly low noise and you would want the two rails to be fairly well balanced. So let's just do a quick uh, uh, measurement on this uh, module. First, let's take a look if the two rails are balanced. I have the module powered from 5 volts. So let's check the two rails. This is the negative rail. It's uh, minus 12.15 uh, volts and the positive rail minus 12.60. So there's about 450 millivolts of unbalance between the uh, two rails and that might be caused by the output uh, topology with these uh, diodes. 
Let's also take a look at the output noise. For that I have my scope connected on the uh, positive rail of the module and we're seeing about 180 millivolts peak to peak uh, noise which I don't think it's suitable for any low noise application where uh, you would maybe uh, use a dual rail op amp. But depending on your application this might be acceptable or not and uh, it might be uh, fixable by adding additional output filtering because I'm sure there's not enough output filtering on this uh, module. But take this uh, noise into consideration uh, before ordering this module and think about your application. Can it accept that unbalance between the rails and this uh, noise on the output? If the answer to that question is yes, then you can order something like this. I don't know what uh, chip they're using uh, as the DC-DC converter chip on the board because they have erased the numbers from the chip but it's a small SOT235 device. I couldn't find an exact figure for the output current but uh, it's maximum 50 milliamps so it's only good for powering op amps and maybe DACs that need only a couple of uh, milliamps of current. That was all for today. Thank you for watching, links for all of the items shown in the video will be in the description below. I hope you found something interesting to order in this video and don't forget to hit the like button and let me know what you think in the comments below. I'll see you next week.